carry on from where we left off. Um, the previous video we were talking about childhood anxiety disorders. And it said that everybody has a level of anxiety. And adults have it, children have it. But especially with children, with kids, if it tends to interfere with their learning, if it's persistent, if it gets in the way of their normal functioning, you know, sort of routine, then it means it has to be checked out. If it gets in their way, because kids go to school, they learn and all that, but in that situation, if that childhood anxiety disorder becomes a problem, when it becomes a disorder, that is when it's persistent. When you have that normal functioning destabilized when it's no longer a temporary issue that is when it becomes a problem it interferes with their studies it interferes with their learning that is when it becomes a disorder because it's been there for quite a long time it's not temporary again it's becoming a permanent thing that is affecting the child's life you got the JXK. so it is quite a very um, serious situation. So we need to really check this out before anything else. Sorry about the call. Um, so let's 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 get on with it. I was a little bit distracted by that. So the problem may be diagnosed as more than just the ordinary anxiety typical in children. So maybe diagnosed as more than just an ordinary anxiety. So which means that if it's affecting their studies, it's affecting them so badly, then it means something needs to be done. You can't wave it and say that, no, let her or him be. You can't just rule it out like that. You need to support your child when they are going through that phase. Because if you don't get help for them, it's going to go into adulthood and their life will be messed up entirely. So please, when it's not temporary, when it's not a temporal sort of event, when it keeps happening, when it's becoming permanent, when it's consistent, when it's persistent, when it's intrusive, when it's uncontrollable, when it's very excessive, when it's inappropriate, when it's bugging them down, when it's really disorganizing everything they do, when it's affecting them so much, when it is not a normal functioning again, and it is really getting some kind of attention and disturbing them, interfering with their studies and learning, please, it means it is more, it is more to it. So have them check out and let them get some help. So when children suffer from a severe anxiety disorder, they are thinking the way they think, decision-making ability, perceptions, of the environment learning and concentration may be affected that is a normal thing even in adults when you have the anxiety it affects your thinking it affects your logical reasoning it affects your decision making ability you can't think straight so imagine as a kid if the kid is going through or the kid is having this sort of disorder happening they can't function normal. They can't function normal because they can't think properly. Decision-making abilities are way out of the window. Their perceptions about the environment, the way they look at things around, they don't even notice that even they are in school. So they don't even act according to the school rules because they are affected by the disorder. So if they are not functioning properly and they, even their concentration levels have, have died 
down completely. Obviously, when they are in school, there's going to be they will be playing through one thing, or they will start making a whole lot of causing troubles in the classroom because their concentration span is gone. They can't even think straight. Their decision making process has to stay at one place and listen to the teacher. They can't do it. They'll be fidgeting and they, they'll be fidget, fidgeting the whole place. They can't think straight when they ask them questions. They can't answer them because they've got this disorder going on and nobody knows what is happening. So sometimes teachers, please make sure that in classrooms you don't sort of you know, um, I'll put it this way. You don't judge, you have, don't be quick to judge the children. Don't be quick to judge individuals in the classroom. Study them for a while and if there's any counseling and if there's any support that, you know, you need to make out to them, please do it. And if you know this anything that is very unusual, speak to your head teacher about it or Try and set up a meeting with the parent and discuss it with the parent and let's see how best we can help the, the, the help the, the, the kids in school. Because if you are quick to judge that, oh, this boy is a very bad boy, this girl is a very naughty girl and all that, sometimes they are in real problems, they are in real issues. Sometimes they have big problems. But if you are quick to judge, you wouldn't notice the tiny winning sort of um, symptoms that is happening and you miss the bigger picture so please teachers I implore you I urge you to be very observant be very very vigilant and make sure you evaluate study them and see what is happening you know because you might get some kind of clue as to what the individual is going through so, when children suffer from severe anxiety disorder, the thinking, as I said, decision-making and everything is, is gone out of the window. Anxiety raises blood pressure and heart rate and can cause nausea, vomiting, stomach pain, ulcer, diarrhea, tingling, weakness, and shortness of breath. So, do you, have you noticed that it's very serious? When there's a boy or a girl in your classroom and they start to fidget and they start exhibiting, showing, demonstrating these kind of physical changes in their body or physical symptoms like heart rate going up, nausea they are throwing up, stomach pains, also diarrhea, tingling, weakness and shortness of breath, maybe some can even pass out. And some of you, if you are not sort of aware of the situation, you might think that the person is playing up or they are just joking or something like that, but maybe they are having a severe attack. So make sure you are very observant, make sure you are vigilant, make sure you, 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 you assess the situation and don't jump into conclusion, don't overjudge, don't you know, um, sort of be judgmental. Just make sure that you observe all these symptoms and then you can come to a conclusion. If you need to call the ambulance to come in and support, take them to the hospital and all that. And make sure they get some help, please. So even if you are home, mothers, fathers, you know, brothers, husbands, wives, please make sure that if you see these kind of physical symptoms please go and help them call the ambulance talk to them before the ambulance can see the situation just analyze the situation first so that you can talk to the ambulance about what is happening and then let them get some help please because it's serious childhood anxiety disorders i think most most kids have it but if it's not temporal and it's coming to be some kind of a problem, persistent and permanent, then it means they have gone into the clinical stage, it's become a disorder. Please get help for them because they are our next generation. So if they don't get well, 
the next generation is going to be messed up. Please help them to overcome it.